the chairmanship of Katrina Shanks, the chair of the Social Services Committee, and uh, also to congratulate those other members of the committee who interacted uh, well with each other, particularly uh, Moana Mackey, the research that she had done and the contribution she made uh, to this debate. The bill manages to address adequately a number of issues that have been raised over um, the last few years, uh, deficiencies within the bill. Uh, and then tackle some new problems too. And an example of that, for instance, is contamination of premises, for instance, with the use with the manufacture of methamphetamine, and uh, requiring landlords to be able to, uh, sorry, the landlords to declare the fact that um, they've been detected and the house had been cleaned prior to a tenant then taking up uh, residency in, in uh, such a dwelling. And I've had a recent situation in my own electorate. Someone has been, um, the family has become quite ill as a result of uh, living in a dress similar to that. It hadn't been cleansed because it hadn't previously been discovered. Uh, but the ability, for instance, to be able to um, take matters before the tenancy, uh, the tenancy tribunal to argue strongly for them to extend some provisions and entitlements to tenants that hadn't previously existed and to hold landlords to account um, on behalf of tenants who, are, who were vulnerable is a good measure as part of this bill. I commend it to the House. Carol Beaumont. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I rise to support this bill as well, and I do intend to, like um, my colleague Moana Mackey and also the Green Speaker, uh, Gareth, talk about some of the concerns. But look, um, purpose of the bill, we clearly agree that there was a need to update the Residential, Residential Tenancies Act um, because there have been significant changes to the structure and dynamics of the residential rental market since that act came into force. Um, and I do want to talk a little more about the number of people living in, in rental housing, but uh, just to note the aims of the legislation first, uh, to encourage the development of a rental market that provides stable, quality housing to those who rent their homes, to enable landlords to manage their properties more effectively and to clarify and appropriately balance tenant and landlord rights and obligations. Now, all of those are very worthy aims. Uh, the question is whether we've got the balance right uh, and whether it does provide the level of stability and quality we would like. And I, I think it's fair to say from this side that while this is an improvement, it doesn't quite uh, get all the way there from our point of view. I just want to note that housing, of course, is a matter of fundamental importance to people. At its most basic level, the right to shelter is one of our most fundamental rights, the, the right to be out of, out of the weather, to have a, a roof over our head. All of these are very important things. And so it is important to try and get housing legislation right. And there are a range of broader health, social and educational implications in having the sort of stable rental market that this Act is meant to promote. Because clearly... These rental properties become people's homes. They may not own them, but they are their home. They live there with their families, part of the community where they're living. We want people to be stable in terms of their children's education, all of those factors. So getting this right is fundamentally important. Um, now, the bill explicitly talks about balance. And I think it's fair to say in the various provisions here that it's, it is debatable whether the balance is quite right. Because certainly, like others here, I would agree that it is important that the landlord's investment in their property, the money that they've put in there is, is uh, secured and that the property that they own is well looked after and maintained and that they retain important rights to that. And, and frankly, in our residential uh, rental market, it's fair to say that a significant number of the people owning those properties are in fact small investors. They quite often, um, are people slightly older than me, but people who've invested uh, their, effectively their superannuation savings into a rental property. And so for them it is significantly important that that balance is there and that their, their investment is protected. But for tenants, as I've already said, these rental properties are where they live and are their home where they are raising their families and going about their business. And so those two things um, are not a level playing field. The consequences of somebody losing the right to be in their home 
is very, very significant. If they do not have somewhere else to go, or even if they do, because there is a big upheaval in having to move from one property to another. So, as I said, Labor supports this bill, although we do have a number of concerns, and uh, at a later point we will be uh, moving a number of amendments. As I said, it was to update uh, the 1986 Act, and there have been a significant number of change, changes in the period since 1986. The number of people living in rental accommodation is, of course, significantly higher. The number of people who can actually afford to buy their own home has diminished. And so we now have the reality that... Um, Home ownership has declined to 67% from a high of 74% in 1991 and that we have about 450,000 rental properties housing effectively a third of our population. So it is a very significant form now of accommodation for New Zealanders. And so we do need to make sure that legislation is updated to meet that. Now, the the bill itself, as others who were on the select committee have identified, had, had a, a great number of provisions. There's a significant number of changes that are part of this, and including um, provisions around fixed-term tenancies, uh, around um, uh, provisions of refund of bonds, um, uh, provisions around landlord responsibilities, right of entering the premises, termination of tenancy, uh, renewal or extension of tenancy, and if others have talked about in some detail provisions around boarding houses. So quite a wide range of areas being covered in this um, in this bill. Now, as Moana Mackie mentioned, there was quite a short time frame to consider what is a fundamentally important piece of legislation with quite a range of provisions and very significant provisions. And I think that's of concern. We shouldn't be rushing through provisions in tight timeframes when we do need to seriously contemplate what they mean and what they mean for people and their standard of living. There were 59 submissions on this bill and 35 of those submissions were heard by the select committee and it is positive to hear that that committee worked hard together to try and get this as, as good as they could. Um, just on housing, I do want to mention particularly the, the situation of housing shortages in New Zealand and particularly in the area I live in Auckland and recently I was privileged to attend uh, the launch of A Road to Recovery, the State of Nation report by the Salvation Army and they talked about new housing building activity having plunged to a 20 year low and they looked at uh, the consequences of this in Auckland with the combined effect of uh, population growth from within our own population and from migration and talked about the burgeoning housing shortage in Auckland. And I do think that that is important. We note that as part of this discussion. And as I've mentioned earlier, the issue of housing affordability is also particularly important when we're talking about the housing market. And uh, it seems... Uh, somewhat ironic to be standing here now talking about this when uh, we were talking about the infrastructure bill yesterday, which of course is about repealing uh, legislation that the previous government put in place, the Affordable Housing Enabling Territorial Authorities Act, which was around trying to ensure local authorities had the ability, they weren't required, but they had the ability to uh, put in place more affordable housing. A member across the House mentions that it did nothing. Well, actually, there was virtually no time for that to be identified, and a far better response, a far better response to that would have been to, to analyse it. Certainly the Human Rights Commission indicated that there was an absence of compelling evidence that the Act is counterproductive. They're talking about the Affordable Housing Act. And it, they noted that it would have the effect of reducing the supply of affordable housing. They regretted the Act being repealed without anything else being put in its place. And I think that that is a sad indictment on this government. Very sad Order. indictment. Order. Sorry to interrupt the member, but this debate on the second reading of the Residential Tenancies Amendment Bill is interrupted and set down for resumption next sitting day, and the House stands adjourned.